Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're gonna meet a Canadian couple who dropped everything to live in a self-converted school bus home with their two toddlers. Sounds crazy, right? Well, maybe it is, but I think when you see the inside of this tiny home, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with how spacious it seems. Not to mention their impressive solar array that's located on top of the bus and allows them to live off-grid for long periods of time. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. I'm Dom. And I'm Derek, and we would like to welcome you to our home, Sunny the Schoolie. The idea was we gotta travel, but airline tickets are expensive, hotels are expensive, restaurants are expensive. If you can take all of that and put it into one little vehicle, you're gonna save so much money and you're gonna enjoy the trip so much more. I would say that to do this trip, he had to convince me. When I travel, what I miss the most is my home. So when he showed me some conversions, I thought, hmm, if you make me a five star like that, I'm gonna go for sure. I wanted to take my kids to go and see the national parks while they're still young, to build a solid foundation so that they love the outdoors. When we decided to do this, it was in September, and he told me, okay, let's do this. It's gonna take me three months. Uh, so at Christmas, we're gonna be on the beach in Mexico, my love. I said, okay. So he showed us up with a bus on October 31st, and we left the next September. It took us about a year. Most of the time he was all by himself, so it was a long process, but, and he was working on that every day from after breakfast till dinner when I say, okay, it's time to come in now because everybody's having dinner and you're making a lot of noise. For me, it's my first house, basically. When I wake up in the morning, I'm amazed with what he built. I think that this bus has let us save a lot of money because we've been able to just boondock where we want in BLM land, in national parks, and it's not expensive to live. I had no idea about this lifestyle. I googled the word boondocking the day that we started driving. So now we have boondocked. We're boondockers. We just boondock. <laughs> I don't know if, like, are we nomads? Are we? Well, no, yeah. Really? I don't what know. is the definition of a nomad? Welcome to Sunny the Schoolie. Sunny is a 40 foot diesel pusher. It's a Thomas built HDX safety liner. We chose the high raised roof version so that we didn't have to raise the roof on it because we did not want to do one of those roof raises. They take so much time. We're running with a Mercedes diesel and we get about 10 to 11 miles per gallon right now. We have no drive shaft at all in the middle of our bus. So we have through storage all the way. In this compartment, we loaded it up with all our electrical stuff. So we have our inverter, our charge controller. At the back of our storage compartment, we put a 90 gallon gray tank and we've been able to use that for over two weeks if we're really careful when we're boondocking. Let's check out the driver's side. On the back side of our bus, just before the wheels, that was the place that I managed to put my black tank. We're on the driver's side in the storage bay, and this is where I found to be the best place to throw my battery bank. It is directly across from my solar inverters and the charge controllers and everything. These are lithium phosphate prismatic cells. They're 3.2 volts and 280 amp hours. I series and paralleled them all together to get a 53 volt uh, battery bank with 560 amp hours. We have enough power to power three or four buses on a daily basis. I looked at it as an investment long term. If I keep this bus, then I'm going to love this battery bank. If I sell this bus and the next person that purchases it doesn't want all this solar, 
I'm gonna be able to take it out and I can power a whole entire house. We named our bus Sunny the Schoolie because we wanted to follow the sun. Then you put so much solar on top of the bus that uh, no, Sunny the Schoolie is now very relevant. With the panels, with the battery bank, with the BMS, because I built my own battery, the whole thing cost me about 12,000. We're running nine 400 watt panels, so we're sitting at 3,600 watts on the roof. We went with such a big array because we have such a big battery and we don't want to run out of power. I threw in my water system down here. I also went with a pressure tank. A lot of people that I've spoken to regret not putting a pressure tank in. And what I used to hold it on were these propane brackets. They're super heavy duty. You can get them to just bolt right onto a frame and you'd be able to hold a 20 pound propane tank, no problem. We have three water filters. We're gonna be going all over the United States, Canada, and Mexico, and we didn't wanna get sick because of water, and we never wanted to be scared to drink our own water. So I work online. It gives me the freedom to travel and be wherever I want. I teach people how to drop ship and run e-commerce stores and brands. And one thing that was extremely important to me was being able to connect to the internet. I have been using Starlink for the last month and we absolutely love it. We've been in the middle of the desert with internet speeds faster than most people's homes. We went with a zombie proof door. This is an aluminum frame with aluminum sheeting on the top. I riveted everything in and sealed it all off so it doesn't leak. And we went with an RV style window. I see a lot of people putting in plate glass from homes or house doors, which is extremely dangerous in a moving vehicle. If you get in any kind of accident, that is just gonna send huge shards of glass all over the place. So if you're thinking of putting in a house window, just rethink and try and find some tempered glass. We left it open on the top without putting a whole bunch of cupboards up here because we wanted to have the biggest feel that we could have in the tiny little space that we're living in. So we wanted to have a nice long couch that we could lay down on. It's all custom made, <laughs> you're in a bus. So underneath our couch, we have a whole storage unit as much as we can. And if you put both of these on the ground, you can have another bed. They fit side by side right in the hallway. And I wanted to build like an armrest with my couch, but I also made it into a nice little storage unit. So I put all, like all our kids' jackets and kind of cold weather gear goes in here. What's nice about building a small space is you can find the extras from a house build. So I found this floor really cheap on Marketplace. It's hardwood maple 5 8 We wanted to have a decent sized table that would fold away to give the kids some place to play. It was kind of important for us to have like a little bit of space because you're in such a narrow hallway. So our table drops down and it gives them a little bit more space. And then we like it nice and warm. So under this bench, I have a diesel heater that heats our whole entire bus. We spend a lot of time driving. I did not want to jeopardize the safety of my family. So I searched all over the place for car seats that had seat belts that bolts to the bus and it is really solid and then the other seat this thing folds straight down it's got two seats two shoulder straps and then it folds up into this little tiny space which gives us this whole hallway to work with This is Damien, he's two, and I think he loves bus life. <laughs> and this is Isabella. Yes. And how old are you? Four. You're four and- Actually, you... I'm five. Really? Yes. No, you're not. <laughs> and do you love bus life? <laughs> yes. What I've always thought is my kids are coming along for the ride. But I think that this is a great way to raise kids because they see what makes mom and dad enjoy life instead of living for your kids. So it's your responsibility as a parent to have an amazing life so that they can see what an amazing life is like and go and live one themselves later. 
We're making a good foundation, a good base for them for later, and it's positive. This little apartment moves to all of these huge backyards where they get to experience unique things outside. Right. We were getting to this final stage and we wanted to get like some nice countertops made and we were looking at the prices of them and they were so expensive. So we just rocked into Ikea and got like one of their butcher block countertops. We really wanted the big sink with the front and everything. But I did this calculation before we had built the bus on how much water it takes to fill one of those sinks. It was like so much water. And since we carry our water on board, I took that 24 inch sink idea and threw it right out the window because you were never going to be able to use that if you're boondocking all the time. So I went with a smaller sink, I built all my own cabinets, I got the full extension cabinets, the drawers because I didn't like it cut off with the soft clothes because my kids, they'll slam drawers and I have some huge drawers that are really heavy and if they slam them, <laughs> it's going to be a ton of noise. I also used as much space as I could here and I went with toe kick drawers. It just uses a little bit extra space. We went with a 24 inch stove oven. The so cookie sheet was like the minimum that we needed to put in here. Our fridge was, oh my gosh, it was such a struggle. We wanted the biggest fridge that we could get. Most fridges are high and our roof curves at the back. So a high fridge meant that the fridge was off the wall quite a bit. Um, so I lucked out and found this fridge. It was like brand new on the market. It does us really well and we're so lucky that it's extremely energy efficient. Not the biggest fan of the bottom freezer because it's got these drawers, but we had to get this fridge because nothing else was gonna fit. Food and water were the things that we thought of the most. So we did as big as we could for a pantry. These shelves go like all the way to the back. Since we're from Quebec, we brought along 50 cans of organic maple syrup and that takes up a lot of space. And then going with the big drawer style, we went with these huge drawers that just barely fit open in the hallway and we just loaded it with stuff. We've got the kids books in this one. We just loaded as much storage as we can. Our bathroom was a difficult thing to design. So many people do composting toilets and this is not a composting toilet, this is a flush toilet. And now we absolutely love it as much as you can love a toilet, that is. But anyway, right now we don't have a door for our bathroom, but our plan is to put a big heavy curtain for a door. I ended up building my own shower. We needed a bath. We have kids. Kids need to get in a bath. Finding a bath that fit here that was going to be 100% waterproof was near impossible. So I thought maybe I could make my own and I looked into making a shower out of fiberglass. It is all one piece. So this thing is 100% waterproof. Back in our little bunk area, we wanted it to look kind of different. We didn't want to just have like a box for the kids to sleep in. We wanted them to have like their little bunks that they felt comfortable in. This is really like their only spot in the whole bus that's theirs. And we did them like two different colors so that they could have their own little style, their own little color. Of course, Isabella wanted pink, but we were not doing hot pink in this bus. And I cut out like a nice little entrance here so Isabella, our oldest, she can, you know, look out. It's not just like a big wall. It's not a cage. And we didn't need a ladder because this is actually high enough for her to climb here, here, and then get up here. And Damien is just being able to get up there. So yeah, it's kind of like a ladder and, you know, a nice little design all in one. This drawer is Isabella's clothes and it goes all the way to the back. We managed to get all of her clothes in there, which is, for a four-year-old, a lot of clothing. And then on the other side, we have our closet, which is packed full of clothes. We have another big drawer that goes all the way um, to the back as well. Damien shares that pretty much with me. 
Back in the master bedroom, we wanted to have a big bed. So we went king. Underneath, we also have our washer dryer two in one combo. So it is a apartment size, so really small. We've only used the washer. We haven't really needed the dryer because clothes dry so fast outside here in the desert. We would rather pay uh, to come to an RV park, plug in our hose and run the washing machine, then go to a um, laundromat. You know, it's almost the same price in the long run and it's so much more enjoyable than sitting in a laundromat. So it was worth putting in that washer dryer. I would not do another build without one. On the side here, we needed a way for those kids to get onto the bed, which might be a mistake. We made uh, a little stair step on this side and it's actually been really convenient. We put our books in there and the kids can climb up and down onto our bed. If you're watching us right now, living our best life that we can, <laughs> I hope that it pushes you to do what you've always wanted to do. I did not know that I could do this until I took that first step. I like when people say, wow, your life is so amazing. Wow, you're so lucky. I wish I could do that. You can. Do it. <laughs> if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? You know, I look at some family members, they're older and they want to travel, but they can't. Things are just holding them down now. They've got these big anchors set in and it's a lot harder to do it. So you've got to be able to break free of that and realize that life is going to be good even if you step outside the box. What's happening everybody? This is Sunny the Schoolie. We made it all the way down to Baja. We've been down in southern Baja for the last couple of months. And while we were here, we painted our bus so that we're no longer ghetto yellow. And on top of that, we painted our Jeep to match. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.